So let's take a look at the Drake cutter. If you're new to my review, so I like to separate it, um, the, the rating of the ship in different categories, and then the average is going to be the total score. And the categories are going to be the exterior quality, the interior quality, the functionality, the cockpit experience, lighting, and then sound. <clears throat> so let's start with the exterior. Now at first, the, I really like the proportions of it. Like it has, um, <clears throat> like the thing that, that catches my eye is the, um, the fuselage shape, the way it goes like this. It's almost symmetrical back to forth. <clears throat> And I like the winglets, they look really nice. They, they sort of finish off the tail end of the ship. And I really like that the thrusters are not circular like on other Drake ships. Like they're, they have this um, rectangular slim shape. I think the way they're positioned, I think it's, um, yeah, it, proportionally, it, it, it's, it just fits together. It looks really nice. As I get closer, <clears throat> cockpit looks nice from here too. I think the yellow um, cockpit glass is a bit... I think it's a bit too much. I'd rather have a red one like on the Pisces, on the special Pisces edition. <clears throat> now as I get closer, I think the... Um, I think the nose of the ship is trying a bit too hard to... I, I don't like that, that um, angular cut over here. I'd rather have liked a straighter nose. This front part looks, it looks a bit like a train or... What I also do like is that they um, held back with the quote-unquote design language of Drake, where everything just has busy detail just for the sake of having a detail. At least on the exterior. Like it seems there's more functionality in the ship and the design than trying to make it look cool. For example, <clears throat> okay, I like those pipes coming out. Then the more fragile support structure really that protects it. I think that's a really nice touch because in previous Drake designs, so any design that was sort of early designs of this game, is that the level, <clears throat> the um, sorry, the, um, the model artist, they often get stuck in a certain brush size. I would call it. And then they sort of just box extrude until something looks cool. I think they avoided that on that ship largely. Yeah, I also like that um, the welding seams look nice. However, it's a good attempt at welding seams, and I like that they tried it, but they overdid it, and it doesn't look as good like like in like it looks in War Thunder. Also, I'm probably I'm going to add some examples if I compare this to another game, another ship. I'm going to add pictures in the post production, which will be somewhere on the screen. So the the welding seems to look a bit. Like, it's a good idea, but the execution of the idea is, is not ideal. And they overdid it a lot. So here, the whole thing has welding seams around it. Yeah, proportionally, I think the, the exterior makes sense. I think the front looks a bit busy. I'm not sure if that is a fuel um, attachment thingy. One thing that caught my eye that looks really nice is that the, the headlights, they have some really nice glass detail. Again, notice here they overdid the welding seams, like not putting it everywhere. <clears throat> it's a bit too much. But I do like the way the lighting looks over here, I guess. That's a really nice detail. Now there's a weakness in, in the entire game with metal or painted metal textures. And they sort of improved on that on the exterior. Notice here you have this um, painted metal with some gloss on it. However, I think they overdid the, the grunge on it. It's a bit too much grunge. I really like that. Um, glossy metal um, appearance, which is a huge improvement of other things in this game. But they're getting a bit lazy over here. The bolts should look a bit different uh, in terms of color than the other thing here. Even if they're sprayed over, it's just the material. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on the exterior. <clears throat> the video would be too long if I did it. 
It's a good landing gear. Landing gear is a good way to see the quality of the ship. Well, you can see at which point the model artists get lazy on a ship. You can check it on a landing gear. So for example, we get a landing gear over here. And this actually is a surprisingly good looking landing gear. I expected much worse. Nice glossy metal. Nice screws in here. That's some good small detail. Again, the welding seems they overdid it. It's like way too much. Oh, this part I don't like over here. Notice that structure. That looks like they just extruded from, from basic boxes and slapped some procedural texture on it to be done with it. So it got a bit lazy here, over here. But it's still better than landing gear on most other ships in the game. So, so yeah, in, in terms of exterior, I think it's one of the better ships in this game. I would call it, it's in the upper, I would call it in the upper 10% so far in terms of quality. Oh, is that a fuel port I can open? I didn't know that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's a good quality here, but I think they just went into some weird detail, like... Especially when it comes to circle detail, they overdo it sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> Wait a minute, if there's a fuel port on the back, on the side over here... Isn't that over here a fuel port too? It will eventually open. Why would it have two fuel ports? It might indicate there might be some ground-based refueling. Which sounds actually like a good, good, really good news. If if you can land the landing pad, and you have some mechanical refueling gameplay. We really like that highlight over here. That's a bit yellow. Balances out the, the whole green and everything. I think the color choice of the exterior is really nice so far. A bit too greasy in the front, but nice cutout window. I think there's too much busy detail over here. It should be just a smooth plate with some bolts in it. Other than that, it's, it's, the exterior is actually, I think, really nice. Not sure if I should rate it this well in the video. Notice the mechanism over here, notice. It actually um, supports it over here. So they put some thought into the mechanism of the, of the, um, the ramp. Again, they put some much more work into it than you would see in other ships. Oh, the button doesn't get pressed, it's a bit lame. Okay, here we go. I hope we don't face plant if I go in here. Now from the structure, I think it looks nice. Because notice the interior structure sort of echoes on... Um, interior structure matches the, out, the outside, the way the supports work. That's what I like in the Avenger, for example. It looks like the interior is properly made to structurally look like it was... It just makes sense. <clears throat> On the Cutlass, nothing makes sense. The Cutlass, for example, is just a carved out interior with really smooth walls with some detail to break it up. Right. <clears throat> okay. The plating is a bit disappointing over here. Looks like a flat texture. Let me check that out. Yeah, it just looks like a flat texture with some parallax stuff on it. Hmm, why is my suit dirty? Okay, maybe it's from the fog outside or something. Is it a bug or is it a feature? Hmm. Okay, so now here's the, the weakness in texturing this game. Notice here, the everything looks like this weird, almost like painted styrofoam. Because here's a trick how you can check if, if your texturing quality is good with your texture artist. Imagine you're, you're taking your hand or your fingers and you, you move it across the surface you textured. How would it feel like in game if you could touch it? Would it feel cold? Would it feel smooth, rough, warm? And this is supposed to be various metal um, structural details. But notice everything has the same exact lighting in the way they Simple world would be shading, but it, it's like the way it relaxes to the lighting, okay? <clears throat> Notice this thing is appears to be all the same material they basically slapped onto it from a procedural material um, library or something. And that is disappointing. Because there's a lot of busy detail without real function. We, uh, it's just... Like, what is this wall for? Like, this wall looks nice. You can tell, okay, it's like these... Um, um, that thing is where you can put cargo inside. Technically, it doesn't have to work for the game, but it looks like it would work, so, so it makes sense. Well, this part is disappointing in terms of... You just look at it. It looks like like some... 
some styrofoam. Not metal, not plastic, something in between. And they got lazy over here too, notice. It's probably just a flat texture that slapped onto it. Now the material itself is nice, but notice it's misaligned. And just some background detail without much thought put into it. The same over here, notice here the metal is that. See, the pipes look nice. They make sense the way they go back here, but. <clears throat> That stuff just looks like they extruded some boxes and slapped it together. I think they got too lazy to actually UV map it properly, so they just auto UV mapped and then slapped the material on. And with the cloth, it should be modeled so it fits into the gap. So, for example, <clears throat> if there's cloth in here, it should be have some structure to it, so it, it sags downwards towards the ground. So it looks like it's actually some cushion material that's fitted into it. So they got definitely a bit lazy here. Oh, I like that. That looks nice. Really nice. And one thing that bothers me in the ship so far is the lighting looks really flat. Like, it doesn't have to have much contrast, but those two small lamps shouldn't, shouldn't exist. And there's probably a point light over here, somewhere in the area, that washes off most of the lighting. So you have, like, bad metal texturing on material that doesn't look like metal or plastic, and really flat, washed-out lighting. So that, that's a bit of a problem. I do like that you have these components you can use, uh, component hatches. I think they have really nice audio, but I'll keep it to the end of the video. Because I got the audio toned way down for myself right now. You know, I like that they have functioning component hatches. Uh, not functioning, at least animated. Now the problem with that is, they're overdoing that classic Drake yellow painted safety bar. They're doing it for everything in the ship, notice. Like, I like the idea that it's a bit more open than a classic component hatch, but they shouldn't have done these, these yellow holding bars, it looks like. At least it should be padded with some rubber or something. So, because if the thing comes loose, it just bangs into the metal over here. And again, here, notice. Completely flat texturing, bad lighting. And that way, you notice here, they just extruded boxes, slap the procedural material on it, and be done with it. And that's dragging down the quality of the thing. Mm. The texturing is really the weak point in this ship. And if you compare to other ships, for example, the Raft has some really good interior texturing, and the Starlifter. So yeah, washed out lighting. The, the coloring is nice, it's grey, but the lighting is too washed out. Even if you turn off the lighting in this room, it, it's still too... too um, there's a turn on the lightings before I started the review. No, this now looks, actually looks a bit better now, because the lighting is less washed out. The problem is, if its lighting is off, it should be pitch black darkness with some exterior lighting coming in. But as you can see, it's not pitch black dark. But notice how the lighting quality changes if, if you don't wash it out. Go further inside. Here's a big problem with functionality in the ship is that you don't have a door lock or close um, button. I wrote a Reddit post today about it, I think. At the time I'm recording the video, I'm not sure if I'm releasing it the same day. The problem is, with this ship or most ships, the doors automatically open, and there's no way for you to lock it open or lock it closed. Only certain doors have lock closed, but all doors should have it. So, for example, if you're in this ship, let's say you're a package delivery player, and you want all the doors to be open except for the this one, then it should be an option so you can lock it open. So if when it's open, you press a button lock, and then it will be locked in the open state. And I think ships like the MSR are taking a lot of heat from players because of the frustrations of having to run through doors all the time that's that's slowly open and so the door opening slowly the problem is that you can't keep it locked open <clears throat> okay now this room looks surprisingly good for a drake room i expected much worse to be honest considering the, <clears throat> the caterpillar or the cousin like structurally the room makes sense you have the bed over here the problem is you don't have it table in the entire room. That's a huge problem, I think. Not sure what this thing should be. Probably just the wall. Now, what they should have done is make it a smooth plated wall and add a shelf to it or something. Yeah, same problem as before. It's too washed out. The texturing is just too undefined. But from proportionally, I think the room makes sense. It's a nice place to have. But again, too much, too much yellow, too much signal lighting in a drake ship. <clears throat> Return of the lights in here. It's 
still too bright for lights off, I think. And it's, it's way too, wash, too washed out. We have the... Um, <clears throat> oh, this door actually doesn't open um, automatically. This is supposedly your toilet and shower. A bit stupid that the electronic parts are exposed to the shower in here. And this could have had more detail, like make it structurally more voluminous, like on the uh, like on the reclaimer, for example. So they but really comes sticking out the isolating material. Not a fan of these uh, things being open by default, like exposed wires just for the sake of being exposed. Because the ship, when it when it's built, it doesn't come pre-damaged out of the factory. Again, texturing really drags it down. This one. I can break your knees if you are not careful here. It comes out way too fast. Really bad texturing over here. So yeah, texturing not good in this ship. Yeah, let's go back. A little behind the glass plate. <coughs> What this area should be is it? I think it's supposed to be a food dispenser or something. That's it supposed to be a shelf. I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to be. But this is a personal locker. Okay, it's nice to have, but it, it should have a table in this room or some shelves you can put stuff on it because this entire wall is just a pure piece of decoration and has no purpose. It just takes away space that should have been done for something else. Now comes the cockpit. Again, it looks actually quite good for a cockpit for a Drake ship. Again, better than I expected. And see, the lighting looks good because I parked the ship in a way, so the sunlight comes from one side. But it's, it's I think it's too washed out. And I'm not I'm not a fan of this whole um, thing going up here. Because currently, you can't actually walk up to the cockpit glass and see what's outside. You have to get into the sea to get to that spot. I think they could have maybe had a ladder or something, or a small staircase or something for that. Now we go inside. Again, component hatches. I think that's the weapon rack. We track again, notice the same material slapped on it without any real shading. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> One of the big things I got excited for is when they started adding the Corsair cockpit and they showed it off in a, in a preview. And I'm a big fan of realistic flight sim gaming, so that was a nice thing. And I kept suggesting that over the years all the time. So I think flight sim feedback eventually came through and the developers thought it was a good idea to have it. So, so it looks really promising from here. A lot better than previous cockpits. So it's a definite upgrade, I think. In terms of cockpit, at least from a distance, um, looks really nice. Let's get into the chair. Okay, let me turn off the off a moment so I can at least no it can't. Okay. <clears throat> now, in theory that would be a good looking cockpit. Well, what drags it down is the, the model and the texturing quality. So the layout and the conceptual idea of a, of a realistic cockpit is actually really good. It's just the execution of the, of the plan is, is mediocre. Now they made the, the text on the la labels not automatically lit up, which is a good thing because on the um, Starlifter you can actually, you, you can barely read what's, what's on letters because it's so glowing. From here, yes, notice it, those are like cartoony exaggerations of a cockpit in terms of how large those those little flippers are or those lip switches. And again the same problem with texturing, you notice know, the same styrofoam material across the whole thing. And here's the biggest thing that annoys me. Look at this MFD cover. This is where the model artist got lazy. Because what they should have done is add an extra 
sunscreen shield because they're usually added so you don't get the reflection from, from light sources or sunlight to interfere with seeing the NFT. So they could have modeled an extra small sheeting on top of it that covers it. Well, what they did, the model artist probably just started extruding from the from the base shape over here, then extrude the surface and model it like this, and then slap the procedural material on it. This is where they got lazy. There's this this inherent blockiness to, to the structure of it. It's just, but yeah, I think it's a great attempt. It's just a bit too cartoony. If they upgrade the texturing and get the proportions right, and the thing is, the, the, there are too few polygons on those things. And some might say it's a small switch in the cockpit, why should it have good polygons? Well, for simple reason is that, like in an FPS game, the things that need to be most detailed on the gun you're holding is the rear side and the rear part of the weapon, because that's the thing in front of your face that's huge. And when you're flying a ship like this, you spend the most time you're playing the game is looking at the cockpit dashboard and has to have much more polygons on it. Okay. <clears throat> and now I'm going to switch to rating the audio. I'm going to put my headphones with on. Increase the volume. I'll start with the engine sounds of the ship. And actually, no, I'll, start, I'll start with the function sounds inside the ship first. Listen to this sound. The way it goes down. It's it's well balanced, it's functional, and it fits the room that it's in. The next sound is this here. Yeah, it's a different sound, this one, but... Very crisp and very well timed with the animation. Really good sound. You know, the way the ratchets in and then clicks, that's a really good sound. I wonder why this sound is different than this one over here, because this one sounds like more like a metal sheet plating in, um, getting slided in. My guess is that sound is reused from another hatch or another ship. Yeah, it's probably used from another ship. See, they got lazy on reusing the sound here, but this one is crisp. And notice um, the reverb of the room. It sounds like it's actually in that room. That's an important point I'm making right now because it's going to be important uh, in a minute or so when I explain more about the sound. What is the way it, it clanks against the, the, um, the support? Perfectly timed audio on this one. And now let's try the... Exterior hatch. Yeah, nice and crisp. I think the, the thought sound at the end is a bit too early before it smacks into the ship. Okay, so the functional sounds of this room are actually really nice. Now, my problem I'm having is with the... Notice yet. This is how loud it is when I'm, when I'm jumping up and down. Just to give you get a reference from the audio volume, okay? Notice how loud the background ambient audio is. It sounds like an industrial washing machine or some electrical engine just whirring somewhere. That's too loud and too much. It should be more like a soft hum that's, that's sort of in the ship, but it's not getting in the way of you actually playing the game. It's way too noisy. Uh, the background ambient audio. And notice, you hear that? This next ambient sound, it, it's it's really grating. It, it's not that grating, it's just too loud. Next room. Notice each room has like this high frequency industrial background noise, and it's a bit too much, and it's a bit too much in your face. I need to bring the audio volumes down of these ambient sounds when nothing's happening in the ship. Okay, now, now this part of the ship is actually really nice. The moving sounds of the ship are some of the best in the game so far. Except for one issue with them. Okay, let's go. Okay, 
It's an animation issue, notice? Notice that last step up when you when you move towards the dashboard, that last step up. I think that was a bit too that wasn't smooth enough. Okay, now the engines are on. Turning off the engines. See now this sounds great. It sounds like it's actually filtered from the engines through the hull, through the air to the ears of the pilot. How oh, it should be. That's a really great sound. I'm turning on the engines. Looks nice too. Turning it off again. Okay, so I would like you to listen to the ambient audio. It's the engine on, but I'm not flying. I think it's a bit too much. It's a bit too loud. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit too prominent. If you're just listening to it in your ship, you're just doing something. But it, it's not as loud as the background noise in the other rooms. Yeah, turn the engine back on. I'm going to start flying a bit. Let's start with the movement sounds. Okay, pitch down. I never liked those. That's not a problem with this ship. That's a general problem with all ships. Is that they have too much robotic character in each ship. Like each ship has its own signature pitch up, down, rolling, strafing. So, and I think it's a bit too much. It should just sound like the thrusters, like like the main thrusters you just heard when powering up, except filtered through the hull and small thrusters. Obviously, that's what you should hear in every ship. Because the job for an audio artist should be to make it sound real. You don't have to. Don't make it have character. Just make it sound good and realistic. And it's gonna have its character. Yeah, you know, like it's like it's disappointed, like it's a robot that's disappointed when you go up. It's a bit too much. Um, and this sound sounds entirely different, and it's a bit too grating. Yeah, you know, the high pitch and, and, and the whizzing. Yeah, you know, and it sounds like it's coming out of inside of the cockpit. That's a big problem here. It should sound like it comes from the outside because of the vibration from from the thrusters. Yeah, that, that, that's like too much character. Now roll sounds. That's a bit better. How about the acceleration sounds and decelerating sounds? They're really good. Okay, let's take a listen. Yeah, that. It's soft, it's thick, but it also has some crisp highlights in it. And it doesn't get in your way like in other ships. The one problem is, the moment I'm pressing W and you see the, the markers are moving, is that you hear that that fire getting lit up sound? It's a bit subdued in this ship, so it's not as annoying. But on other ships, like the one on the die, it sounds like somebody goes, and that's an extremely irritating sound. We hear the, but the way the engine, the crisp engine sound, the way it's filtered from the outside, is absolutely beautiful. I think that's some of the best engine flying sound in the entire game so far. To slow it down. Oh, that sounds good. What I don't like is how it ramps up the longer you hold it. Does it? Oh, probably doesn't. So the strafing sounds up, down, left, right, they have a bit, they sound too robotic. Yeah, but overall, the, the main engine sounds, just, just the fourth flying sounds, absolutely great. Now, here's a problem when you have the engine on, but you're not flying. Okay? You hear that high-pitched, rhythmic, whirring sound that's like medium-high pitch. You hear that, how it periodically, every two or three seconds, really grates into your ears. You hear that? That's a big problem, because... Um, it just sounds like some melodic whirring, and it sounds like it, it's too much in the room, and it's too prominent. It should be like a, a low-frequency rumble that's somewhere inside of the ship, and it should be much more subdued unless the engines are working. Okay, so turning engines off. Now we can go to the final review. <clears throat> okay. Okay, cutter. So, let's start with the exterior score. How good is the exterior? 
I mean, for the ratio, it's, it's really good. I like the proportions. Remember, the, the wings look nice at the end. The, the, the thrusters have this rectangular slim shape to them. I think it's a really good exterior. That even compared to other ships I gave it before. So I gave the 400 IS-7, even though I hate that, that stupid nose and the thing. Hammerhead, I gave an exterior of 8 points. So the exterior, I think... Mm, somewhere between 7 and 8. Or should I give it a 7.5? Then later calculate the average. Hmm, not sure. Dave, you can tell me in the comments what you think. Um, <clears throat> okay, so... Like, I don't think it's a, as, as good as the Hammerhead. But it's better than a C2, a Starlifter, I think. Mm, I'll give it an 8. Yeah, it, it, I think it's a good 8. 8 out of 10. Okay, what's next? Okay, now we have the... Uh, and what, what color was that? The interior. That's the interior looks of the ship. That sliding texture quality. All the, everything that's not functional, just the way it's proportioned and the way it looks. So, now the texture quality really drags it down. They really got to invest in better texturing, met, make metal look like metal, make plated, painted metal look better, rubber look like rubber, less texturing, laziness in certain areas. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> hmm. I gave this star lift a 10 out of 10 because of the extremely high quality of the, of the texturing. So I can't give this one a 10 out of 10. And the hammer had also got a 10 out of 10. Yeah, let me see, let me see. Hmm. Mm, if the texturing would be good, like Starlifter quality, I would give it an 8 out of 9. However, I think the texturing quality is really disappointing and the lighting is really washed out. So I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Okay, now we go for functionality. That's basically how functional the ship is, how interactive, how everything that you can interact with, basically. Okay, so. Now, the way the hatches are set up, the component hatches is nice. I don't like the yellow bars, but okay. Um, I mean, the, the central compartment, you're looking at it, it's nice and spacious. Uh, like in other scores for references. So the Fauna die got a functionality 7 out of 10. Mm. It's missing the door lock buttons. That's a problem. Yeah, and functionality, it's, it's a bit problematic. I'll give it a 5 out of 10 in functionality. Okay, let me see what else we have. Uh, cockpit experience. Now, cockpit is, is a hard one for me because they really went there into, into flight sim realism, and I think that, that that reserves a lot of praise. The problem is the execution of the, of the system is a bit bad texturing, buttons are too big. Uh, so it's definitely better than a Starlifter cockpit. Uh, not definitely, but it's slightly better than a style of the cockpit, I would say. If if the texturing would be like in a good flight, like in with this yes cockpit, it would be 10 or 11 out of 10 if it would be possible. If it would give 11 out of 10, but um, yeah, the cockpit is mm, difficult, difficult. I give it an 8 out of 10. Like the texturing sucks really bad and the proportions are out of whack, but. At least they try to go for some good flight sim reason cockpit, so that deserves an 8. Again, if the texture would be great, it would be 10 out of 10 flawless. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, did I forget if I have something? Exterior, interior, functionality cockpit. Not, oh, I still have lighting as a score. Okay, now lighting is... When it's dark, it's not dark enough. That's bad. And it's too washed out. Or they avoided like the excessive darkness of, of a drake ship. 
But if it wouldn't be as washed out, I think... Mm. Oh, lighting, what should I do? I need to go to the next room, check it. Like, it's not bad, it's, it's, but also not good. It, it's, it's average, I would say. In terms of lighting, the, see, the Starlifter got 8 out of 10. It's, it's, it's average, it would be a bit more, uh, 5 out of 10. And the final category is sound. In terms of sound, this is a... Th could be even the best ship I've reviewed so far in terms of audio. Like, there's some issues with the engine idle sound. Not good. And the these overly noisy ambient character sounds for each area of the ship. Sounds like an industrial washing machines are all the time. But the engine sounds, the way the thrusters are moving, there's a sound you hear all the time you're flying. That's absolutely beautiful, so... And the... The racking sounds of the, of the component hatch earlier, I obsessed so much over. <laughs> um, so yes, audio is almost perfect. Uh, nine out of ten. Audio is, is almost perfect. So what's the total score? <clears throat> Let me get my calculator. Okay, where's the calculator? Okay, we got eight plus. We got six categories, 41. Six is... So the average score is a 6.83, which we round down to 6.8. 6.8. I think if the texturing, the lighting quality was better, I think it would be one of the best chips in the game. And of course, of course there's the functionality issue with the doors not, not locking open when you need them, which is going to be highly irritating when you're running back forth through the ship all the time. So yeah, it's basically texturing, lighting, some functionality issues. I think it's a great ship. I think it's one of the best starter ships so far. But it doesn't have these these high peaks in, in texture quality like you get in the Starlifter. However, it has a peak in, I think, the best ship audio so far in the entire game. So the audio team, I think, did a great job on this one.